And on all. Thank you, Susie. Thank you, Susie. Thank you to LULAC, and thank you to the mothers and the grandmothers. My name is Lillian Riojas, and I am, am your city council member, one of your city council members at large. Um, I want to go ahead and do what Susie said and tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a hometown girl. I was raised in Corpus Christi, went to Smith Elementary, Shannon Junior High, and King High School, graduated, went to Baylor University, was the first in my entire family to go to college, graduated, and I did something that not a lot of young, single, 22-year-old girls do. I came back to Corpus Christi because simply my mother asked me to. Came back to Corpus Christi, and I uh, was fortunate to get a job working at the Port of Corpus Christi uh, 20 plus years ago, and my whole entire career has been up and down the Corpus Christi Ship Channel, working first for the Port of Corpus Christi, then Lyondell Chemical, and now Valero uh, Energy Corporation as their Director of Public Affairs. And that business background in industry, I think, really has provided me a great foundation to understand what really drives our local business economy. In those 20 years, I also did a lot of community involvement, served on numerous boards, addressing issues that I think were very important to not just me, but to this community. Health, served on the American Diabetes Association Board. Literacy, served on the Corpus Christi Literacy Council. The Environment, served on the Coastal Bend Base Foundation. The list goes on and on and on. But I wanted to say something about to the mothers and the grandmothers. Um, I wanted to just make sure that I send a gratitude of appreciation to all the single mothers out there. Many of you know that my mom, mother became an instantly a single mother um, when I was almost 12 years old. My father died and she raised two girls and was pregnant with one on the way. And so as a single mom, I really appreciate the struggles and um, that they have to go through every day because I lived and grew up with a single mom who had to take care of two daughters and also one was on the way. And so I clearly understand the hardships that mothers have to face, especially single mothers. Um, so I want to say thank you to all the single mothers out there. My theme in 2012 and again in 2014 was New Path to Progress. And I think that um, I continue that thing because in so many ways we've just started on that path to progress. I think we have listened to what the community has wanted to be addressed. And I'm going to talk about three and four of those things that I think we have listened to. Streets. There have been, I inherited the street issue this term. Remember, this is my first term in office. We inherited the street issue. And so I was part of a decision that said I would no longer kick the can down the road for another two years, another four years, another six years. So we put together a street plan. Uh, yes, it included a street maintenance fee that I think is just a start. It's not a popular start. It's not, I don't think, that long-term solution. It's a start of a solution. I think over the next few years, we have to continue to explore and enact other options in order to pay for our streets. The legislative session's coming up. We have aggressively asked for our legislative group to pursue other fundings at the state level that could cover streets. And I think that that's an option that we continue need to, to pursue. The other thing was water. Water was something that not just the businesses, but the residents have asked for. All the water source we received was from rain, and many of you know it hasn't rained lately. Well, we've had a little bit of rain, but it's not been it made a tremendous difference. So we need to, as a community, find diverse, drought-tolerant water supply in order to have water for our residents and for our businesses. Public safety, it's already been mentioned that this year we were able to allocate additional funding through the Crime Control uh, District Fund to help provide 13 more officers for the community of Corpus Christi. I think that that's not enough. I think that there is a plan out there that the chief has that I want to sit down and work on with him on a multi-year phased approach to finding out how we can include and get more officers on the street to enhance public safety. So I think that that's critically important. The final thing I wanted to talk about that I think we listen to people on is about how do we grow our tax base? Ultimately, that is the only way we are going to able to provide for this community is to continue to grow our tax base. $32 billion, many of us, I think all of us, were at the state of the port on uh, Thursday. Judy Hawley had a slide up there that showed $32 billion of investment that's coming to this community. That's amazing, and we have an amazing time and opportunity to use those funds and put it back into the things that the community is asking for. I think it's essential to attract new businesses, but many of you know I work for Blair Energy Corporation, and I think you have to continue to keep the businesses that you already have they provide jobs, they provide taxes, and they provide community contributions to numerous, numerous organizations 
like LULAC, like numerous others that are in the room. So I think those are things that we have just started on, and I think that we need to continue on in the next two years. So I'm asking for the community to give me another two years to serve you as your city council member at large. what we're going to do things just a little bit different from at large. I'm going to let them talk about themselves and go back and sit down, and then I'm going to let you direct questions to individual people after they all have finished. How's that? And I'll expedite matters. Who's number two on the ballot? Chad, come on over. This will be a test over there in a minute. one of the city council people to step outside because we don't want to be guilty of having a quorum. Excuse me. Actually, yesterday this issue came up. I talked to the city secretary and they are posting forums. They are posting broad issues of what we are discussing on the forum so that we will not have those issues. I asked her, now, I don't know if she managed to get this one posted. I listed this one as one. She didn't get it posted yet? 72 hours. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, because we want to we wanna have people at liberty. You don't have to go. Just step outside the room. Okay. Sorry for that, but I think it's, it's, it's important to do that. No way none of us get into any trouble. Um, my name is Chad McGill. I have the honor of serving you in, at District 2 in your city council. And um, throughout these last two years, and even before then, I'm serving in many, many boards. I would list them, but um, they're, they're in this information here. There's some right back on the back table. Um, Throughout these several years, I've gotten calls from all over the community and basically people saying, you know, can you help? And um, with respect to our, my fellow council members, um, I'm always going to step up and ask how, how I can help. I have a bad habit of asking how I can help. And, and then and the, the reality is working with the people in the community, people reach out to those they feel comfortable with. And in doing so, having taken the stances, and, and, and it says in here, having taken stances on uh, voting no on the public funding of Destination Bayfront and voting no on the creation of a street fee, um, I got even more calls. And I got more calls and more calls. And, and, the, and really, from the request from help, it really became where people said, I wish you were my councilman. And so that's the reason I'm stepping up from District 2 to at large. I'm, I'm answering that request from, from the entire community and from people like you who really just want public servants. They don't want politicians. They want people who work hard for the people. Uh, I'm not in it for the money, obviously. We're, we're paid $500 a month before taxes, and uh, it's, it's, it's a labor of love. I enjoy serving the people. Uh, there's three things to remember about me. Number one, I'm all about infrastructure. Number two, efficiency. Number three, job creation. And when you look at each one of those, I can answer questions on those, but when we start talking about infrastructure, about this time last year, we knew we had an over $860 million wastewater issue. We've got 1,287 miles of wastewater collection lines in this city, and 72% of all of those lines are clay pipes. You know what happens to a clay pipe when there's a crack in it? The tree roots. Have you ever seen a tree move a building? They're pretty powerful. When a root gets into a wastewater line, what, what is it that we go to the store and buy for plants to grow? It's in those wastewater lines, right? And you don't have to say it, but <laughs> out of respect for everybody. But the reality is, that's what the trees are going for, and, and that's what clogs up a lot of those lines. That's why we have the sanitary sewer overflows. That's why we have a lot of breaks in our lines. So we've got a lot of infrastructure needs, specific infrastructure needs, both from wastewater. Imagine if you look at every street in this town, Imagine what it looks like underneath that street. We've got a lot of work to do. And so I took that stance on Destination Bay Farm. It's a very difficult one. I love the concept of the park. But the reality is we've got to spend your tax dollars on our needs and not our wants. It's, a, it's an analogy of a family sitting at a dinner table and the kids saying, let's build a pool, let's build a pool. I'd love to have a pool too, but the reality is you've got to fix the foundation in the house and the roof first. You've got to take care of your needs first. So infrastructure, efficiency in government, cutting waste, and creating jobs. Uh, I'll save the time for you and for your questions. Thank you. My name is Chad McGill, and I'm running for City Council at Large. Uh, 
good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out here, and thank you to Lulac and the grandmothers and mothers uh, for holding this forum. Um, my name is Gillard Nunnes, uh, running for City Council at large. I am a uh, uh, former United States Naval officer, I'm a veteran. Um, all, I also work for the Coca-Cola Company. I've been working for them for the last 14 years. I have a beautiful wife, Vanessa, over there, and uh, I have four kids. Supposed to be three. <laughs> we had a little accident. We got out of the plans for us, and we have four. Uh, so, but I, but I have four great children, and thank God they're all healthy. You know, there's, you know, I, I, I'm pretty busy. Job, family, kids. I need this like I need a whole hand. But I can't turn away. I care about the city. I care about the people in it, and I care, and I, and I see some things that are going wrong with the city. When I see the boats on Destination Bayfront, a $44 million park, and Chad kind of took my thing on that, I'm going to get you on that. Uh, the analogy I gave is that, you, you know, you're re-landscaping your yard when you have broken pl plumbing and your roof is leaking. It's not the smart thing to do. It was not the right thing to do. We need to make sure that we're focusing on what's important, the basics. How many of you remember about five years ago, we flooded out all those houses out of Greenwood? You remember that? That's because our, our sewer, uh, our, the drainage is going right into our, our sewer lines, flooding out, and backed up the, the, the Greenwood plant, and flooded all those houses with sewage. That's important. That's a need. I, I, drove, I drive by that area every day going to work. I know exactly what that kind of issue is. We need to make sure that we're spending our money in the right places, doing the right thing for the people. Not, you know, we don't need to help us outside. We need to make sure our, our infrastructure is for the entire area. So those are the reasons, that's one of the main reasons why I'm running for this office. We need to focus on those things. Anyway, I'll, I'll let you ask some questions here and we'll hear from some of the other candidates. Thank you very much. Next on the ballot, who can you give to us next? Ray? Yeah. Come on, Ray. I want, I want to thank you uh, for waiting for me until I finish uh, the Ray Madrigal show. We do it on Saturday mornings between 9.30 and 10.30. And, and uh, when Susie goes over there, she says, Ray, I, uh, I need to leave, so can I go first? Sure, you can go first. So when I'm late, I say, Susie, uh, wait for me. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> I'm Ray Madrigal, and I'm running for city council at large. And um, I want to let you know first that I'm a veteran because I usually forget that part to tell you that I'm a veteran. And there's not many veterans in the city council. And Corpus Christi has been known to be a um, military community. Uh, but I think that only veterans can speak for veterans. But um, they try to do the best they can. And, uh, and I want to let you know that uh, after serving three years in the, in the Army, I, uh, I feel like I want to serve my community now for only two years, so that's a break. Uh, I decided to run for city council when uh, I saw my water bill. And my water bill was, wow, uh, and it seemed to increase every time, every time that, uh, that I saw it, you know, every month it, it would keep going up and up and up. And I said, wow, um, first we get six dollars and we're going to fix the street. Then we get, supposedly it was ten dollars, but I think uh, the reaction of the community was so great that, that they decided, well, let's pull it back a little bit to five dollars. Uh, people that are on fixed income, they have a problem. They have a problem paying these bills. And there's a lot of retired people in this community. And I want to let you know that I'm one of them. Uh, so uh, I decided to run it. And I can tell you one thing. I can speak up for myself, and uh, I think that things can change. Uh, we just need the people that are hurting a little bit to run for this position so that they can voice their opinions, and I'm one of them. So uh, you can vote for Ray Madrigal for city council at large. Uh, I'm number four in the ballot, and I can tell you that 
I have served this community on several boards and commissions throughout my life. You know, uh, uh, I've been around a long time. And uh, I can tell you that I'm a graduate of Del Mar College as a legal assistant. And I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University. And I just returned from Seagrave, Texas. Seagrave, Texas, where I was a municipal court judge and I served there for the last year and a half. So I have a little, little bit of experience in government. So remember, Ray Madrigal for City Council at large. Thank you. Oh, and I forgot. <laughs> and last but not least, Mark Scott. And what number are you on the ballot, Mark? Five. Five, number five on the ballot. Thank you, good morning. I, I, uh, I want to apologize for a couple of things. You're not getting my A game today. I, I'm going to tell you some things that not a lot of people know about me because somebody today said, Mark, people don't know you. Uh, I'm hypoglycemic. I have a blood sugar issue. I, I deal with it. Uh, and I think, I think so. I don't think I ate well yesterday. So I'm under the weather. I've got a weird. So you're just not getting my A game today, and I apologize. Um, I will tell you, I was raised in Kingsville, Texas. Uh, my dad and mother were school teachers. Actually, my dad was in the Army, and when he got out, we moved to uh, Port Aransas. We got there just in time for Hurricane Carla, which uh, decided, my parents decided that was a bad idea, and moved to Corpus Christi. And then my dad got a job at Texas A&I in Kingsville, so we moved to Kingsville. I was raised in Kingsville with uh, my little brother, Michael Lee, uh, and my parents ultimately adopted another young man named Michael. So I have two brothers named Michael, which is kind of fun to introduce at parties. Uh, my mother was a home economics teacher in Kingsville. They're both still there. Uh, I graduated from uh, ancient King High School uh, and then went to Texas A&I University. Uh, spent five wonderful years. My dad said I made A's in fraternity life and C's and everything else. Uh, but I got lucky. I met a beautiful young woman named Carol Alexander, uh, who I think is the reason I'm standing before you today. The story goes, and I saw her and immediately wanted to date her, and my friend said, Mark, she only dates leadership. She only dates people that are eagles. I mean, you got no chance there. And I thought, well, how hard can this be? And so that set me out on the path to try to be successful so I could date Carol Alexander. So I must have been somewhat successful because we got married in 1984 moved to Corpus Christi. Uh, we have two kids, Christopher and Alex. Uh, they're both going to uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Uh, and we have, uh, up until about two weeks ago, we had two dogs and one cat. Uh, and then Christopher brought home another dog, which we immediately said we we're never gonna keep, and we since named, and he will never be leaving the Scott family. Uh, so we have a full household. As I told you, I went to Texas A&I where I got a degree in business. Uh, then I went to Texas A&M, I mean, Corpus Christi State University where I got an MBA. Uh, I've been very active in the community for many years. Uh, uh, Bob mentioned that we worked together on an entity called 4UCC, which nobody really remembers, but in the late 80s, we were the largest city in the country without a four-year university. In fact, where there were about 156 cities in the country, we were the only one without a four-year university. And the organization called 4UCC set about getting a four-year university. And I remember the days when the leadership at Corpus said, you will never get a four-year university in Corpus Christi. And, and through that experience, I learned that we can do things if we come together and work together. We can overcome adversity. In the mid-90s, Carol and I decided that the community needed to go through a planning exercise. Uh, Mary Rhodes laughed at us. Uh, I still remember that lunch where she called us the naivete of youth. We started a, a, a program called uh, Vision 2000, which at the time was the largest uh, citizens-based planning organization uh, into effort in the history of Corpus Christi. We were very excited about that. That led to my experience uh, on the city council. Uh, my dad taught me early on that hard work overcomes uh, most obstacles. My first job was cleaning toilets at Stop and Shops in Kingsville, Texas. Remember, that's the precursor of the old uh, of the, of the stripes and the 7-11s. Uh, when I joined S San Jacinto Title, my current employer, I, I got the lowest job on the total poles. My, my job was uh, a filmer. That was the lowest entry level position you could get if you went to work for San Jacinto. And I'm, I'm excited, I'm proud about that. Now I'm the president of our Coastal Bend region. Again, as I tell people, and I, I've said it with Colleen a lot, 
If there's 100 people in the room, I can assure you I'm not the smartest person. I know it. But what I can tell you is I'm committed to being one of the hardest, hardest working people in the room. I tell my son, or I told my son when he was growing up, that the kid that wants the loose ball in the basketball game gets it. So the question is, who gets the loose ball? And the answer is the kid that wants it the most. And so I'm hopeful that although you may agree on some things that I've done and you may not agree on others, that you at least know that I'm a hard worker. Uh, I've loved my experience on the city council. Uh, uh, I think we've done good work. I think Corpus is better today than it was yesterday. But I'm telling you, I think it'll be better tomorrow than it is today. Uh, the city manager the other day called it a target right environment. There's still plenty of work to do at City Hall. Uh, and I want to kind of give you an example. Um, I was at the uh, Innovation Center the other day talking to, that's the Texas A&M Innovation Center in Flower Bluff. And the guy stopped and said, you need to know that we're all celebrating uh, the FAA designation for a uh, UAS system, the drums. There's only seven in the country. And we're one of them. And people are saying that's going to create thousands of high paying jobs. And his take was, we're all celebrating the success today, but the city started that years ago. He said, we would not have gotten the drones had we not had a mechanical engineering program, an electrical engineering program, and the innovation center and had the city not invested $600,000 in that application. Well, the city of Corpus Christi invested a million dollars through our 4A board for uh, mechanical engineering. We did a million dollars for electrical engineering, a million for to create the innovation center, and as I told you, 600,000 for that application. So the point I, I wanted to kind of get is that we don't read a lot of that because it just, it just happens and it doesn't make the press because there's plenty of other great things to talk about. But, I do believe the city is making uh, an effort to improve uh, our community. Then I'll last tell you that I think we're doing things to help Corpus Christians get jobs. Uh, I mean, I think the jobs are coming. The fact that we laugh about that kind of said, they're coming whether you want it or not. You know, we have jobs coming. The question is, and what you should ask of us is, what are we doing to make sure that Corpus Christians get the opportunities that are there? And I will tell you, I think we're doing a lot. I told you about the mechanical, electrical engineering and the effort. We also gave about $750,000 to Del Mar College uh, for the truck driving program. We gave around a million dollars uh, for uh, uh, a, 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 an application program so that Del Mar College students could get jobs in, in the, uh, 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 the industrial field. So I think we're making major investments to give Corpus Christi the opportunity. I will close by telling you, if you really like me, I'll, do, I'll try to do three things. I'll try. One, I love talking about water. We, we're, we've got $32 billion in development. Much of that is because of decisions your elected officials made 10, 20, 30 years ago on water. And I am engaged and want to continue to be engaged in making decisions today so that we can grow 20 years from now. I serve on the Regional Water Planning Group, the city's uh, water advisory committee. The other thing is military facilities. I serve on the military facilities task force. I love exercising our rights and opportunities to grow our military installations. And I'll continue to do that over the next two years. And I do think we have some unique opportunities to grow downtown uh, that I, I think we can talk about if those questions come up. I've talked too long, I'm sorry. My name is Mark Scott. I love my experience in city council. I'd love to work two more years if you give me a contract. Thank you, Mark. Uh, listen, uh, all of you candidates that haven't spoken, don't worry, because this show is going to be divided into segments, so everybody's going to get to be on there. Uh, now we're going to open it up for questions for our at-large candidates. If you have a question directed to one specific candidate, please state the candidate you want to ask the question because we want to really expedite matters. Are there any questions for the at-large candidates? Sir. Okay. My first question is, again, we go into Chapman Ranch annexation. Which one of you supports Chapman Ranch annexation? Which one of you doesn't? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you, rather than getting to a different, a big explanation, let's just say whether you support it or not. Uh, I don't support the annexation. Uh, I'd rather us do the negotiation with the uh, with Chapman Ranch to have some sort of uh, agreement. You know, we don't we don't need to have that kind of animosity, which would lead to a lawsuit. You know, our current city council is suing our firefighters, and it is you know that it, it creates a hostile environment, it creates poor negotiating uh, uh, points. 
So it's better to, to negotiate on a friendly term instead of uh, uh, provoke a lawsuit. I've consistently abstained from this item. My employer has a relationship with the company, whether there's one windmill or 100 windmills or anything that happens. So it wouldn't be right for me to be a part of the conversation or a part of the actual vote uh, because uh, my employer has a relationship with them. So I've abstained consistently in writing and recused myself from all discussions. Thank you. It is difficult for me to tell you how I'm going to vote on Tuesday. I have not. They are in negotiations. I have not seen the final document. Uh, I am deeply concerned about the negative impacts of a wind farm this close to the city. It would be the closest wind farm development to a major metropolitan city in the country. I'm concerned about its impact on NOAA, our, our radars. I'm concerned about its impact on aviation. Uh, and I'm concerned about its negative impact as we grow on the south side. So. Uh, I am concerned about it, but I haven't seen the, the final negotiated document from the wind energy. After picking cotton in Chapman Ranch for so many years, my knees still hurt from working out there. I'm not in favor of an in Chapman Ranch area. Uh, one of the main reasons is I think that it will affect the operation of Naval Base Corpus Christi. And that's one of the main employers for the area. So, no, I'm not in favor of it. Like Mark, um, I'm one of the incumbents that this issue will, the conversation is continuing and it certainly will continue on Tuesday. Um, there are still many pieces of information that I think are out there that I want to continue to evaluate before I make a final decision. Um, the information that has been provided to us about the broadcaster's concerns, um, some of the proximity from the military and the impact that it has on that that does concern me, especially as we go into uh, possible BRAC negotiations. Anything that could put our military in jeopardy concerns me deeply. Um, and also just looking to the future and how we all understand that the South Side, maybe not today or tomorrow, but in years coming, that the South Side is really our primary growth corridor. So I'll wait till Tuesday to hear more information um, before a final decision is made. Good, thank you. Any other questions for all the candidates? Sir, go ahead. And you can specify candidate or whichever one. This question will be for all the candidates, uh, the ones that are running for council and the incumbents. I'm speaking as a citizen. My name is Carlos Torres. I've lived in the city almost 30 years. I'm a firefighter for the city of Corpus Christi. And uh, I'd like to have this question answered because I think the citizens deserve an answer, whether you know the answer or not, uh, you know, do the best you can. Back in 2008, 76% of the voters voted for a fire station to be built. It would be fire station number 18 located on Ayers in Saratoga, that area out there. It hasn't been built yet. Uh, we had the same issues with the training facility many years ago as well. And I'm sure there's been other bond issues that have been in the news lately that weren't completed. Um, at a recent city council meeting, uh, a young lady went up and asked the city manager of the council for her status, and that's what I'm asking for on that fire station. She was given a card from the assistant city manager, Susan Thor, and to my knowledge, we still don't have a status update. So as a citizen of Corpus Christi, I'm asking for a status update, and if you're not on the council, then give your opinion on this issue of fire station and reading. Thank you. We're going backwards, starting with Ms. Rowe. Carlos, as, as has been discussed by the city manager, I think that fire, fire Station 18 will be built. It's a matter of when it will be built. Um, there's been discussions about lots of studies between the firefighter study, the city's study, and so I think that those are all being developed, they're all being addressed, they're all being evaluated in order for us to make the right decision. But I'm confident that at some point it will be built. I think it's just a matter of when. Thank you. We, a matter of time, I think the voters uh, voted on it and it should take place. Uh, the area that it's going to be building, I understand it's uh, Saratoga and Ayers. In that area, uh, we don't have a fire station or a rescue uh, ambulance service. And, and one thing that we've learned uh, from Vietnam, if nothing else, uh, was as, as soon as you get a person that's injured to a hospital, you'll be able to save them. And uh, I had the experience this year of riding in an ambulance. And, and, and I'll tell you what, 
I was glad to see those guys. And uh, I want to thank the firefighters for uh, endorsing Ray Madrigal for uh, City Council at large. Uh, I, uh, I have not been in there once in a while. Do not want to be in an there once in a while, but hey, great faith our firefighters should I be in there once. Um, all the data we have shows us that it's uh, now is not the time to build the, the fire station. Uh, I think there's really fascinating conversation around the annexation uh, and the wind farm. I do think the wind farm terminates all that south side growth, which is important to our future, uh, which would add data that would tell you to build uh, a, a station 18 sooner rather than later. So uh, I was not on the council in 2008. I know that sounds odd because I've been on the council since 1912, uh, but I was not on that time. But all the data we have says now is not the time to build it. I do think it'll be built. I just don't think it'll be built today. A few weeks back, Councilman Garza asked the staff, and I think most of us, if not all of us, agreed, we wanted to have a catch-up plan for all of our bond projects, uh, including that item. Uh, I think the key there is understanding not only the viewpoint from council to staff, but where the staff is on each bond project. And I think that commitment by the community to invest in, in, in our city, uh, rightfully so, the citizens should know where each project is and where it stands today, what obstacles there are, how we're gonna get to those obstacles, and then it's incumbent upon us as council members to alleviate those obstacles, find a way to make it happen, and, and, and follow through with that commitment to our citizens. That's how you build public trust, and you build public trust by being predictable, consistent, and those are the times you go back to the public after you've finished your projects and ask for the ability to invest again in your infrastructure. Thank you. You know, this, this is a trend with, with City Council. We, they put things there and then they realize that they don't need something or maybe it's not the right time. Well, you know, now it's going to cost a lot more than it would, be, would have been in 2008 and 2009. Things have caught, everything is growing, we have, there's competition, materials have increased in cost, and now we're, now we're at this point where the, the bond may not cover the entire cost of the, of the fire station. If the voters vote up on something, then it is uh, incumbent on us to actually do it. You know, uh, and, and likewise, if, it, if they vote against something, like this mentioned maybe, we should not do it. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Gordon? Yes, my question is: Is uh, the, the entire city council, all of them, except one, <laughs> Priscilla Leal, she voted no. The rest of them voted yes on spending three hundred and sixty-eight, three hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars to put destination on the bayfront on the ballot. My question is: Why, when they could have waited to this? election and it wouldn't have cost the city cost taxpayers any money to put it on the ballot this election. But the entire council voted to spend 368000 My question is why? Um, it was not a good decision, uh, but it's not, that's only half the, that's not the entire amount that was spent. $1.9 million was spent in pre-engineering for destination payment. That money is gone. That, how many officers could that have paid for? How many firefighters could that have paid for? It is, it is these kind of decisions for spending money in, in unneeded ways that is the reason why I'm running for this office. Thank you. Gil's right. And uh, a lot of the points that came up in this last two year session. Um, about Destination Bayfront, there was actually some pre-funding items that came to us in a future agenda item, and we put a stop to that. So it would have actually been more than 1.9 million. Uh, the reason why I voted for you to have the choice on Destination Bayfront is because, frankly, you deserve the opportunity to say this or this. Now, my no vote on every step of the way, except for that last one, to give you the choice, uh, basically told you where I am on, on spending the public funds on infrastructure first, not on destination big fund, and not on wants. We need to spend your dollars on needs. The vote to get it to the ballot, that was essential to get the community to send a message back to us. 
So um, I don't feel that, uh, and I don't think that, that in 2014 at that, uh, we, we made the decision to, to push it to 2014. There could have been other pre-funding items that came up. There could have been uh, an opportunity for us to get even painted more in a corner to get there. You had the Shoreline Realignment Project that was dovetailing into the Nation Bayfront. You had a lot of other elements. Uh, the tide was pushing in the direction of supporting the Nation Bayfront. And I felt it necessary to give you the opportunity to send us a message. And uh, thank God you did. Noises County turned out per capita higher voting than any other county in Texas. Out of 254 counties in Texas, Noises County turned up per capita higher than any other in the state. So that message was loud and clear, and I still stand with you. Thank you. Just a couple of precursor uh, comments. Uh, an election cost a number of $10. And we were having an election. It's just a matter of which pocket they took it out of, and the city said, look, we think we need to get this answer. I think that was the right, I thought it was the right time. But my point being that if the city hadn't charged the 360,000, the county would have charged the 360,000 because we paid the county to offset their costs. So their, their cost of the election went down. Uh, I thought we needed to get a resolution on it. Um, I think it would have just, it would have just been a topic for two years. Uh, I have an interesting take on Destination Bayfront. It goes like this, we didn't do it. We thought we had a good idea. We brought it to you. You said it's a bad idea. We've moved on. I'm done. I get. I work for you. I thought I had a good idea. I came to you and said, hey, I'd like your permission to go do this. You said no. And I have moved on. End of story. As a, court, as a caller time said the other day, I said, end of story. I moved on. And I talked about some of the things I'd like to focus on in the next two years. You didn't hear the words destination. I'm not even sure you heard the words Bayfront in my original, my earlier comments. So I thought it was the right time to do it. I, I thought just putting it off two years, uh, uh, it would have, uh, it would have just festered the community to come together, give us direction. You clearly did, and I've moved on. I was waiting for the applause. <laughs> As a veteran, uh, I, I, and 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 many other veterans fought to preserve Memorial Coliseum, which uh, we thought was a, a, a very uh, well-built facility and it was dedicated to the veterans and uh, that it should not be torn down. Uh, obviously, uh, we didn't win that one, but uh, uh, like he said, we just have to move on. But sometimes we don't forget. We don't forget that uh, uh, what happened there and who was responsible. So uh, I was not in favor of, uh, of Destination Bay Fest. I was asked to participate with them, but after having been involved in Save the Coliseum, uh, I was not about to, to turn around and, and, and work to, to build Destination Bay Fest. I don't think it's a bad idea. Uh, I think the timing was wrong. That was, that was the main thing, and people were, some people are still mad at it, <laughs> you know. It's just uh, something that happened and you just gotta move on. But every time I go down that road, Ocean Drive, uh, you look at that vacant piece of property there and say, wow, you know, something should be built here. I think when people come from out of town, they don't expect the, such a large piece of property right in, in our front yard that's uh, empty and a bunch of weeds growing up. So. Uh, uh, it, it was the wrong time. Thanks, Ray. Um, let me make sure people understand. This council, the last two years, only voted, made three votes related to Destination Bayfront. Three votes. One was yes, to give the voters a choice to choose if they wanted it or not. And you said no, and like Mark, we have moved on. The second vote we did was to make sure that there was a mechanism that only the public funds would be accessed if private funds were raised. And the third vote was a vote against accelerating and spending an additional $1.2 million before it got voted in. And so basically there was a movement to put more money into engineering and design, and this council said no. The only time it would be spent in the event that it was passed. It didn't pass, so that $1.2 million didn't get spent. So the $1.9 million that Gil talks about, that was done before 2012.
So I just want the community to clearly understand that this council made three decisions related to Destination Bayfront. for all of our at large candidates. They're going to be here. Uh, so we want to make sure we have them on the board. Make sure to talk to them individually. I'm sure they'll stick around for a little bit. And the next is District 1. But I'm going to give an opportunity to District 5 candidates since he's not opposed. Where's Rudy? To come over here and give us a few words. Yeah. 